solving linear systems by graphing. So we are um, we're going to be looking at graphing um, linear systems, and so keyword here really linear. So we're talking about straight lines. So let's recall something uh, regarding the format that is best to use for uh, solving linear systems. So what we're going to do here is we're going to recall this uh, formula here. Y is equal to mx plus b. And let me uh, use a different color here. So and, and really, whenever we have an equation, we always want to arrange it in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. And there's a reason for that. And, and this is what's going to help us really graph. If you still struggle with uh, graphing, um, linear systems, please check out one of my videos on graphing uh, linear systems where I um, kind of talk about the um, this slope intercept uh, form. So anyhow, the value here in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. If you notice this m right here, this m value that is in front of x, so it's the number or even a lack of number, as long as there's an x in the equation, Whatever number is in front of x when we have it in this format, of course, is considered the slope of the uh, of this line. So, and the slope is right considered rise over the run. Now, the rise. Okay, let me just get. It color here the rise is what we're always going to look at as being either positive or negative right so if you have a slope that is something like uh, 2 over negative 3 always treat this negative up at the top because regardless this whole fraction here 2 over negative 3 is really the same as saying negative 2 over 3 and it's the same as saying the whole thing is negative right so the negative is pretty much in line with our uh, fraction line okay so all three of these mean the same thing so if they mean the same thing why can't we just move this negative anywhere we want it and really we want to put it with our numerator because the numerator is our rise and that rise can either go up or down so if the whole thing is positive, right, if the whole slope is positive, we know that the line is, the rise is going to go up. If the rise is a negative or the whole slope is a negative, right, that means our rise, we're going to count going downwards. Right? So we're going to count going down. Okay? And the run... Okay, if we, we, we treat this method here, the positive going up and negative going down, the run will always go to the right. Okay, so in other words, let's uh, look at, a, uh, at an equation here. And let me uh, write out an equation as such. So we are going to have the equation y is equal to excuse that little line y is equal to uh, something like 2x minus 3 okay and as we said here the number that is in front of x when it's in this format of y is equal to mx plus b is going to represent the slope so the slope here is this so slope is equal to 2. And 2 is a whole number. And we always want our slope to be um, in, a, uh, in, a, in a fraction form. And always, I like to use a fraction form just because um, I want to have it uh, in fraction form because we want to hear a slope is a rise over run. So we want to have this uh, over some kind of value. So we have, and anytime we have a whole number in a fraction form, it's always going to be 2 over 1. So our rise is a positive 2, our run is a positive 1. Now, we didn't address this plus b here in this, um, in this question here or in this statement. And this plus b really represents the y-intercept. Okay, and that y-intercept is really where 
on this y-axis of this x uh, and y-axis will this line cross. So using this here, this 3 here, our whole number that's in our equation, and sometimes we might have it rearranged. X is the, the number with X is not always going to be in front. It might be the second uh, term. But the number here, the whole number here, will be, um, we're going to also look at the sign that's in front of it. So it's not just 3, but it's a negative 3, which means the Y-intercept for this equation right here is at negative 3. So we look at where 0 is, and we always count along this Y. So here is where the negative 3 point part is. So this negative 3 is right here, and then we're going to start counting from the slope. So the slope here, if we look at it, this 2 is our rise, right? and the 1 here, our run. So we've got 2 over 1. So we're going to take this, we're going to go up to 1, 2, and we're going to run to the right for 1. Okay, we're going to rise 1, 2, and we're going to run for 1. We're going to rise for 2, 1, 2, and we're going to run for 1. And so what we want to do then is, I like to use at least um, four lines, four points, sorry. Okay, four points, and we're going to try to, oops, just trying to use something to use as a ruler. But it wasn't working on my tablet. So, of course, use a ruler. Okay. So, we have our intercept. It crosses at the negative 3. And each point, where really our points that, that really are going to cross some kind of coordinate here, will be at 2 over 1. So, what we're going to do today is we are not only going to graph one line. We are going to graph two lines. So, we are going to graph, let's say, another line and find out at what point do they intersect and that's really the focus of today's lesson so sorry for the um, long introduction so here is the following equation now key word, key things to uh, look for find the point of intersection of the graphs of the following system of equations so really point of intersection we want to find out where do these two points cross um, one another now other things to keep in mind, the question might be asking you solve, right? Anytime you're asked to solve, right, is also, and, and you have two lines like this, you're fine asking to be found the point of intersection, okay? So let's look at this uh, first equation here. Y is equal to X plus 4. So we said we want the equation to be in the form of Y is equal to M x plus b. So when we have the equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus b, we know that the number in front of x is going to represent our slope. And look at the number that's in front of x. There is no number. So if there is no number, really, technically, there is a number, and that value is really a 1. So and as we said, whole numbers, when we want to write as fractions, we are going to write it down as 1 over 1. And, and the reason for the fraction, as we said, uh, as I said before, if you're writing the slope, always write it in a fraction form. Because as we said, top number represents the rise, bottom number represents the run. Now, our whole number, right, and we take the sign that's in front of it, is going to represent our uh, y intercept, right? So we know that the y intercept is at plus. Four. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to find plus 4. So we start at 0 and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Because the y-intercept is where on y will this line cross. And it's going to cross right at this point. And the slope is 1 over 1. So since the whole thing is positive, we know we are going up. And again, the bottom is always to the right okay so we're going to go up one to the right one and draw our point up one to the right one up one to the right one do not just go up one and draw your point you always do both first before you draw the line uh and or sorry you draw the point and so then what you do is cross uh connect the dots 
Okay, I'm trying to do it now without a ruler. So please bear with me. But again, please always use a ruler. I tell my students always use a ruler, right? And again, now uh, when you after you draw your line, try to uh, gra um, label it y is equal to x plus four. Okay, so we have our first line, but now we have to draw our second line. Now let's use a different color here. Uh, let's use green. So now, as I said once before, notice here, we said we want it in the form of y is equal to. We've got the y equals, right? We've got the y equals, and it's mx plus b. Now, do not think that this is your slope. It is not. It, we said when it's in the form of y equals, whatever is in front of x is our slope. So the number that is here in front of x is a negative. Again, no number, so that means that the slope is negative 1. But as we said, whole numbers, we always want to write as a fraction, so it's negative 1 over 1. Okay, so now notice here the negative, and as we said before, the negative just tells us that we are going down. Right, so we're going to go down, but again, this is always to the right. So now, this whole number here, this 2, this is our b value, right? This is our y-intercept. And the sign in front of it is a positive. So let's find positive 2 on the y-axis. So it's 1, 2. So here is that point of the y-intercept. And the slope is negative 1 over 1, so it's going to go down 1 to the right 1. Down 1 to the right 1 down one to the right one. And as I said, I like to draw at least four points, even though you can kind of work with two. Uh, but just for argument's sake, uh, two po uh, th four points is always good, especially when the lines aren't as accurate as, as these ones, right? When points aren't as accurate, where notice how they're pretty much going diagonally in through each one of these squares right, of the grid. Okay, and again, I am going freehand on this tablet. And I tell my students, and I'm sure your teachers are going to want the same thing, always extend your lines pretty much to the edges of whatever grid you're using. And again, as we said before, label your equation. So we have y is equal to 2 minus x. Okay, so now we, we've uh, drawn both of our lines. Now what we want to do is find, as the question says, the point of intersection. And that point of intersection is right here. Okay, so the point of intersection is a coordinate, right? The coordinates are always in some kind of form of an x, y value. And that value is, if you count this correctly, at the negative 1 and 2. 3. So negative 1, comma, 3. So the point of intersection for this um, set of equations pretty much is at negative 1 and 3. And a way that you can check it is place both the x and the y um, values into either this equation or this equation. And really what you're trying to do is prove that the left side equals the right side and we'll talk about uh, that in a, a later um, video so hopefully uh, you found that helpful again not always are you gonna have two lines that were are gonna cross as we as I said in uh, one of my other videos um, other possibilities for lines is well two lines can actually be um, parallel to one another. Two lines can be pretty much uh, overlapping one another. So it'd be exactly the same. So here we actually have uh, one point of intersection. And again, we cannot have more than one point of intersection um, when two lines cross.